Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is going to be my review of the Razer Death Adder V3 Pro. This is a new wireless ergonomic mouse from Razer, and it is the only ergonomic mouse right now on the market that goes over 1000 Hz polling rate. This goes all the way to 4000 with the attached 4K Hz dongle. I think any Death Adder loyalist out there is going to be a little upset with the shape changes. It does not really feel like a Death Adder to me. It feels more like an EC2, a little bit longer, kind of an EC2+. Plus. And if you are somebody on the market that is maining either the EC2, the Outset, the EC1, the Model D Wireless, or the X-Lite V2, I do think that you should have your eyes open on this item because if you, again, are maining ergonomic mice, I do think that this is one of the best performing wireless ergonomic mice. And it is definitely a mouse that has extremely good build quality. I've had two copies, both with pristine build quality. And I do think that the sensor here, the wireless performance, the 4K Hertz performance are something that is very compelling for a ergonomic main user. Let's get into it. My mouse is the advertised 63 grams in white. And I do want to say here that my build quality is phenomenal. I have no flex from the sides in, the top down, the bottom up. I have virtually no side flex on mouse one and mouse two. Scroll wheel is very tactile and crisp. Mouse one and mouse two have just a little bit of pre-travel, barely any post-travel, and my side clicks have no pre or post-travel. Everything feels extremely responsive, very tactile, very crispy. Everything that we would want to see in Switch implementation in a Razer product. Everything feels very good. Getting into the very obvious changes between the V3 and the V2 is the fact that it is no longer a one shell design at the top of the mouse. You now have a separated mouse one and mouse two. And the beautiful thing here with that nice V3 optical switch is the switches and the button actuation feels extremely consistent all the way from the bottom of the button all the way to the top of the button. And the buttons are very long. So it actually is very unique here to have such a consistent feel on buttons that are actually that long. The front flare near mouse one and mouse two actually is gone. So the front of the mouse feels a little bit more narrow. And as far as the side flare on the thumb, it actually doesn't feel as drastic on the V3. It feels a little bit flatter, making the mouse feel a little bit more symmetrical compared to the V2, despite being a very obvious ergonomic mouse with that curve and upward flare and hump that does sit right here on both mice. But the V3 to me feels as though in the hand, I sit a little bit higher with where my palm makes contact to that hump. And I do feel that my index finger and my middle finger rest a little bit higher on mouse one and mouse two compared to the V2. You can see though that they did have a lot of flair, a lot of essence, a lot of that nature of the V2 that went into the V3. But with those changes, the mouse actually does feel quite similar to a EC2. Really, the mouse is a little bit longer, so it kind of falls in between an EC2 and an EC1. But in my hand, the mouse feels very similar to a Pulsar X-Lite V2. For this portion of the video, I do want to throw up gameplay clips to my left. This is going to be from one game of Apex Legends while we were live testing the mouse on stream the other day with the compatible Razer 4K Hertz dongle. I want to reiterate again that this is the only ergonomic mouse I know of that goes over 1000 Hz. And with the 4K Hz dongle, of course, you can go from 1000 to 2000 to 4000, but you will have a massive hit on your battery life going from 90 hours at 1000 to 24 hours at 4000. Even on 1000, I feel like the mouse performs extremely well. The coating is nice. The side buttons feel phenomenal. Again, no pre, no post travel. And the switches here, the new Razer optical switches in this particular mouse, even feel better than the Razer Viper V2. So the switch implementation here is just out of this world. They did an extremely good job with the overall quality of every single switch on this mouse. In terms of the new sensor, it feels extremely responsive. It feels snappy. There's no delay. There's no motion latency that is noticeable by any human means at all. And moving from 1K Hertz to 2K Hertz to 4K Hertz, did I feel any noticeable difference in my gameplay at all is the real question here. And I did not. I didn't feel like I was beaming any harder than I normally do. I don't feel that it made me from who I was into uh, somebody that was juiced up on roids. I just didn't get that performance enhancing feel that I was looking for going from 1K Hertz to 4K Hertz. But I did notice a visual fidelity upgrade in game. And when I am moving very quickly and moving my mouse, just doing 180s or flicking or turning, everything feels a little bit smoother and I almost felt like my monitor got a elevated boost in that ultra low motion blur quality or clarity. 
Um, it just feels a little bit clearer, a little bit smoother, and I do really enjoy it. So for me and the level that I play Apex at, I might not notice an upgrade in my performance going from 1K Hertz, 2K Hertz, 4K Hertz, but you might. But I do definitely notice a visual fidelity upgrade going from 1K Hertz to 4K Hertz, and I do really enjoy it. So I do think that if you are going to get the mouse, I do think at $150, you should bundle it with the Razer 4K Hertz dongle to get some form of boost that you can't get otherwise on the market. If you already own an X-Lite V2 and the X-Lite V2 was brushed off your desk, you didn't main it, do I recommend paying $150 for the Death Adder V3 Pro? I would not. If you're not an Ergo fan, why pay $150 for a mouse that is similar to an X-Lite V2 and you know you're not going to main it? If you're going to main this mouse, I think $150 is fine to pay if it is going to be on your desk for a long duration of time. If you're not an ergo person and you just want to get this mouse to have a little bit of fun with, I would wait for it to go on sale. I would wait for a little bit of a price reduction on that 150 to make it more worthwhile for you. But again, if you are going to main ergo, you love an EC2 or an EC1, a Model D wireless, a Pulsar X-Lite V2, I do think that this is probably going to be on my desk as my number one ergonomic mouse. Just the overall feel of the mouse, the performance of that sensor, the 4K Hertz option, I really do enjoy it and it will take the seat on my desk for my main ergonomic mouse. So guys, one thing that I think is very interesting is that if we were looking at a G703 Superlite right now from Logitech and it had the same exact specs and Logitech was charging $150 for it, I think a lot of reviewers would not be caring about the price, but because it's a death adder, because we just got hit with the Viper V2 Pro, I think a lot of people are very concerned about the $150 price, and I don't really get it, right? You just have to really be cautious and watch out for what you're spending money on in your mouse hunt for your end game. If you already have tried an X-Lite V2, and you don't like it. Do I think you're gonna love the Death Adder V3 Pro just because it has a new sensor, just because it has 4K Hertz? I don't think you are. But if you absolutely beam, you shred, you destroy lobbies on ergonomic mice, do I think that the Death Adder V3 Pro right now is probably the best wireless ergonomic package on the market? I do think it is. So if you are going to pick it up, do I recommend paying the extra 15 bucks for the 4K Hertz dongle? I definitely do. At least you can play around with it. You have something that is unique on the market. The first ergonomic mouse, first ergonomic wireless mouse at 4K Hertz performance. And I think just everything about the mouse feels great. The buttons, the switches, the weight, the weight balance, the performance, the sensor, everything feels good, right? The only thing I would maybe change, like I would change on probably all mice, is the coding to be more like a XM1R coding. Um, but again, I think I would probably make every mouse in the coding of the XM1R because whatever they do to that thing, it is absolute black magic. So again, guys, I think it is a well-rounded, awesome, fun, ergonomic package. If you don't like Ergo, don't pay 150 bucks for it because it's not gonna change your world. It's not gonna blow your mind. But if you love Ergo and you want that performance upgrade, I do think that if it's gonna be your main mouse, it's worth it. I hope that helped, guys. If it did, please leave this up to the channel and I'll see you guys in the next review. Peace.